much. So, Karina, go out there and be a trailblazer, yeah? My name is Karina McCosco from Academic Influence and I'm here with Dame Wendy who is in computer science but you actually started in a different field so could you kind of give us your background and kind of show us how you got into computer science and um, how you got into the original field you were in? Okay, so I'm, um, you know, of an age, and um, I, I, when I, when I was at school, there were no computers, and there was no computer science. So, um, and I actually wanted to do medicine, but my uh, headmistress wouldn't let me do medicine. She said it wasn't a career for women. This was 1969. So, um, uh, I, I was very, very, I was very natu naturally good at maths, and she encouraged me to read maths at university, and cut, I went to Southampton. University on the south coast of UK um, because it was a good place, good maths degree, and, and only an hour from London where I lived. My parents lived, and um, anyway, to cut a long story short, I really enjoyed both my maths degree, and then I went on to do a pure maths PhD uh, in algebraic topology, and I loved it. But there weren't any jobs; no, there were not many jobs for pure mathematicians, um, uh, and I wanted to stay in uh, higher education. Uh, so I got a job teaching maths to engineers, but actually it doesn't really excite me. And uh, this is into the 80s by now when the personal computers were coming out, the very first ones. And I got interested in um, what they could do because I'd done maths, uh, done computing at university and not enjoyed it very much. It was all punch card and paper tape and rather boring, I thought. But um, once I saw the personal computers come out with the graphics uh, and then uh, we could put pictures on them and we could put sound on them. And, uh, as, and, and I got interested in how computers could be used to for, in education, really to help people find information. And I began to see the future a bit in terms of where this was going to go. Um, and I, yeah, I ended up um, going back to Southampton University as a, a lecturer in computer science. And the rest, as they say, is history. Wow, that is incredible. And did you notice that most of the people you worked with who uh, were just starting in the computer science field came in as mathematicians? Or did they kind of come from various fields? No, it was mainly in those days, maths and physics. Computer scientists came from maths and physics. Even electronics, you see, was a very embryonic subject in those days. Um, and uh, many electronics departments came from physics departments and computer sciences computer science tend to come from, tend to come from maths departments in those days. There were no degrees in computer science in the eight really. The just beginning. We started our first one in Southampton in the eighties. Wow. And you were the first uh, female professor in your field, right, at Southampton. Uh, could you kind of tell uh, us? Well, I was more than that, actually. I was the first female professor of engineering at Southampton. Oh, wow. Southampton, you might not, I mean, you know, and I know there's a Southampton in the US. You might not have heard of the University of Southampton because we're not, in, you're not Oxford, Cambridge or Imperial, but we're a very, very good university. We're in the Russell Group in the UK and very research led and very science and engineering. We're one of the top engineering schools in the UK. And um, I was the first, yeah, in 1994, I became the first female professor of engineering at Southampton. And then there wasn't another one for another 10 years. I mean, there were very few and far between. Wow. Well, as somebody who is a woman who's about to um, enter into uh, hopefully science or math fields, can you kind of tell yeah. us what that was like? And uh, wow, that's just so like for somebody my age, that's kind of hard to imagine because you see so many female professors now. But um, yeah. Well, it was quite intimidating, I have to say, and it steeled me for things that came later where, I, you know, I've spent so much time being the only woman at meetings as I work my way up the ladder. And I remember when I was, you see, not only was I a woman, but I was also doing something that wasn't traditionally computer science. I got involved in the, in the, with the personal computers in the eighties with what we now call multimedia, putting video and, and pictures and sound onto computers. And in those days, there's nothing digital. So you had to write drivers to, to, to display those and then to interact with them um, and uh, from analog video and analog tape, sound tapes. And um, uh, 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 I got into this thing called hypermedia as well, which is, you know, the, the World Wide Web is a hypermedia system where you use a computer to, ha to help you link between different pieces of information. That's the concept. And I got very excited about it. 
but in those days, that, that sort of thing was science fiction because it was, in, you know, so hard to put these things together. And it wasn't traditional computer science. It wasn't programming languages, compilers, operating systems, you know. And um, so I got told in public by one of the professors at Southampton that there was no future for me either at Southampton or in computer science if I didn't knuckle down and do some proper computer science. So I wasn't just fighting the fact that I was one of the few women around. It was also the, the sub, what I was, I was pioneering a new idea. And um, luckily, the head of department, who was a man, Professor Barron, uh, became a mentor of mine and he supported it. He could see that what I was doing was important for the future. Wow. And so he backed me. And if it hadn't been for that, I could well have dropped out of computer science. And then he backed me and I gradually found, I had a wonderful sabbatical at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I got a lot of confidence there. And um, because p other people there were doing this multimedia thing and um, I met lots of people at the time that were doing it. And, and anyway, then I went, I was able, that gave me confidence to carry on with that work. Um, and then I, you know, you, I, 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 I worked my way up, hard work, built a lab, team of people. We were building our own hypermedia system called Microcosm. And I got started to write the papers and, um, yeah, I got the promotion to a full professor, as you would call it in the US, in 94, and the only one in the engineering faculty. Wow. And it was hard. It was quite hard going into meetings. You know, they used to be go quiet when I went into the meeting because they sort of didn't know what to talk about when a woman came into the room. <laughs> I thought, what do you talk about when I'm not here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, wow, that is incredible. So you were essentially a trailblazer for a trail that wasn't even there yet in this field of um, hypermedia. That is so inspiring for me. And I hope a lot of the other people who watch this and you were talking about um, your uh, hypermedia um, research project that was before the World Wide Web, wasn't it? It was about the same time. So I was developing in microcosm in, in, we started in 88. We started, we had our first system running at the end of 89, which was exactly the time that Tim Berners-Lee, who I got to know very well, um, was developing this, the, his first ideas for the World Wide Web. And he put the, we met at a hypertext conference in uh, 1990 in Paris and it was a, we had a demo of Mike, we had a paper about microcosm there and he was talking about what became the world wide web and he put the first website up that christmas so from then on i worked with him a lot um so we were we were working there were lots of hypermedia systems around then and the web became the dominant one largely because I like to say Microcosm was a better system than the web and it was more sophisticated, but we ran it on um, a Windows PC with proprietary sort of protocols, whereas Tim's vision was, look at this internet, let's build the web on top of the internet with open, universal, free for anyone to use standards in a distributed way. And that's what ine ine eventually led to the World Wide Web becoming the dominant system because it enabled everybody to use it and it gave it a way to scale. Um, but yeah, yeah, we, it, was, uh, it was an exciting time. It was the beginning of what we call the internet these days because really the internet's been there since the 60s, 70s, of course, as an internet of computers. But what the, the layer of the World Wide Web gave people access to the internet. So it's all become called, the, we call to talk about access to the internet today, but of course we access it through the World Wide Web. Wow. And I could hear you talk about this for a very long time, but we like to keep these interviews a little bit shorter. So is there any advice that you have for women going into STEM or just people in general um, as they're kind of starting on on their careers? Well, uh, I would say that um, see, it's very important. People say, why do you need to worry about how many women are in, involved in STEM? And in particular, how many? why do you need to worry about women in computing? Well, we are 50% of the planet, right? So these systems and these, these artifacts are being designed by a small subset of the, uh, the people on the planet and for everybody. And it's so important that we have diversity of workforce 
in the, in this area so that i mean these things these are designed you we as we can't use them with one hand the the guys can right it's a big difference and and um the the um it's so important that we are involved and in, in, in every aspect of the industry but also it, it also in the in the design and development so we need we, we need diversity of the workforce every at every level every part of the industry um, and you know you don't have to have a computer science degree to be interested in computing. We want some people like yourself, hopefully, to go into this area and understand the science. Be like me, because it opens doors. It's the careers are just fabulous. Um, but some people don't have an affinity for that, and that doesn't mean you can't work. Um, you know, be very powerful and in the industry in different ways. But it's just diversity across the board. Really, we need. To encourage and get people to realise. I mean, let me. I want to just. I know we have a short of time, but let me just say something about. You know, we all lived through this COVID pandemic, and you know, this time last year, the world moved onto the internet for everything, and the internet kept running. It didn't fall over. It was so resilient, and that's a huge testament to the pioneers of the internet who designed it in a way that the you know i mean we've only got 50% of the of the planet actually with access to the internet at the moment but almost that entire half a planet went onto the internet this time last year to do everything and it stood that test and i think that's amazing and to be part of that world that allows us to do this to to sort all sorts of problems out for the world is just so exciting Wow. Well, that is incredible. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It was really interesting hearing all you had to say and all about your career um, within computer science. So thank you so much. So Karina, go out there and be a trailblazer, yeah? <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs>